Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have an afterlife conversation with David Bowie. We haven't spoken with Mr. Bowie for some time. I thought it would be a good time to reconnect with him in the afterlife. I have enjoyed my conversations with David Bowie. You can check out the playlist here on Above Life Channel. He really has an energy of this kind of cosmic consciousness or this cosmic awareness. He's an energy that I have found in the afterlife that is most connected to star seeds or star guide energy. He also is extremely creative, very innovative, and has almost this like higher, not philosophical, but really like higher, deeper ascended in, uh, messaging that he shares through. So that's a little different. He feels different to me than other afterlife guests that I've had. And so maybe you can practice your clairsentience or your empath energy and feel David Bowie as we connect in today. All right, it's cold out here. He says, yes, quite. Yes, because he knows, because I'm like, I'm like this. I was like, should we, should we talk inside? Should we talk outside? But I wanted to talk outside because it's beautiful and the energy of the green will help everyone, I think, renew our sense of wellness, which is exactly what we need during this time. But it is, it is a bit chilly out. Yes, that is absolutely true. So, but it's nice to connect with you. I've, I wanted to connect with you, to reconnect with you, to talk to you about the creativity and the innovation energy in particular that I often will feel with you. And I sense that right now because there's been so much intense energy released, like big, choo -choo, almost like solar flares. But I don't think there is like a, astrologically, I don't follow astrology necessarily. Um, I think it's a great tool, but it's not like my specialty or anything. So, um, but it feels like that energetically, like solar flares and like the solar plexus, spirit flares, like choo choo, choo choo, a lot of energy in the solar plexus, <laughs> the spirit chakra, which is connected to the sacral chakra, which I find that passion, desire center, and the hips and the pelvis, the womb space is creativity, drive, passion fire energy, which I, it makes sense then, right? That we would talk about creativity and innovation right here, right now, as these like choo -choo solar flare energy is coming from the spirit chakra. Can you talk about this energy stuff? And it, surely I'm not the only one feeling it. And let me just be clear, you guys, you guys, let me be clear. I'm not really productive. It's a kind of an energy that's like kind of zaps me a bit, catalyzes me. It makes me feel a little um, like, ah, but it's not like I'm not effectively channeling it. You know, I'm not using that energy like that, ah, you know, like a lot of caffeine kind of energy is how it feels. And despite the fact that I'm drinking out of a mug, it's actually really hot water in here <laughs> because it's later in the day when I'm recording this. So can you give us some insight, David, about the energy and the solar flare spirit kind of lots of energy? that I'm personally feeling, I'm sure some of, of the, the viewers here are feeling it too. He says, you're referring to astrology and astrological patterns. He says, it is good information. He says, you're quite right. It is a good overlay to understand what's really going on. And he says, I would encourage some of you, if you're interested in astrology, to to do a bit of research and to learn a bit more about it. It does provide a good overlay or what he looks like, kind of like a drawing or a blueprint is what he's showing me, like literally a, a plastic piece of kind of paper with some stuff on it, like overlays upon whatever we're dealing with in our own personal lives. And he says, it gives you a, uh, a bit of an understanding of, of what might be going on uh, in and around you, he says, in and around you. So, for those of us like myself who are not well versed in astrology, what kinds of patterns are you talking about, or what kinds of um, of information pieces could we could be gleaned from this from this understanding? He says, it's an organization. It's a way to organize things so that you can see a clear patterns and identify more clearly what the source is of the energy that you are receiving. He says because. The reason why he says you are amplified, you're amped up in certain certain areas is because there is a, a diversion that's happening. You're diverting the energy that you're receiving 
He says, so you've made a request. This is David Bowie sharing this. You've made a request and you're receiving energy, but you're diverting it into other places. And if you have an overlay or a structuring in which you can identify the different layers or different, um, different parcels, he says, not layers. It doesn't go like this, you guys. It goes like this. So it's like a, a pie shape. Not a linear shape, but a pie shape, which does form the energy of kind of a compass or the energy for me of, I would say, compass or a uh, like a wheel of the year or a, a clock. So those three things I would identify. But he says it's astrology. It's like the moon cycles, the houses. He says it's astrology, Bridget. He said it's all the same thing. It's just a little bit different. Uh, he says eco ecology, ecology, like it's the same at the core, but then it's a little different way to um, present the, the structure. Uh, he says the houses, he keeps saying the houses, the houses. Okay, so and 13, 13 houses. That reminds me of like the Mayan calendar energy. 13 moon cycles and then, oh, I love that. Okay, I'm good with that, I'm good with that. Very, he says Mayan, very good, he says, I do like the Mayans. He says, that is very good energy for grounding. He says, and actually the solar, the uh, sacral chakra with that beautiful, um, he shows me this like, um, almost like Sedona orange sand. Yeah, he show, oh, I like that, Sedona orange sand. That vibration in your uh, sacral chakra is well served, he says, well, well suited, well suited, thank you, well suited to this cosmic grounding that you desire. So you see, working in the cosmic energies and the, the what is possible energies at the same time grounding the elements is not something that is um, natural when you think of it with your mind in a linear thinking or thought pattern. But when you think of it as a cycle or as a a picture, pictorial view of things, it makes so much more sense. He says it will make so much more sense to you and your senses will appreciate it. So the energy you're diverting to these other parts of you to receive, it's not, it's, it will go to the places that you are most comfortable utilizing the energy, not necessarily the place where it is a best fit. So this is where you are challenged. This is why the solar flares, the solar plexus, Literally, you guys, it looks like a scene from like Star Wars, like with like choom, 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 choom out of the solar plexus. The belly is like choom, 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 choom. solar. <laughs> That's what I see. He says, because you have excess energy, you've asked, you've amplified the desires. And then in order to fully receive the energy that comes into you is received in and and by you at a level that you're not conscious of. And so when you have these bursts of energy or these excess energy points, he says um, the nodes are, are not able or prepared to process this level of energy that is being received because it doesn't go in that particular outlet. It doesn't fit it. He says it would be kind of like trying to plug, like you guys, the end of the iPhone, you know, into a just an old school like cord plug and outlet, you know, like you can't put it in there, the USB thing, you can't put it into the wall, like it doesn't work that way. You need what? What do you need? An adapter. You need something in between. And he says, so this is the in between, an overlay. He says, you can use things like the chakra system. You can use a, uh, a moon calendar, a Mayan calendar. You can use astrology. He says, in order to understand the, the broader concept of the consciousness that is being received and interpreted, he says, and, and turned up, like the volume is turned up. I use the word amplify, but he's saying turning up the volume on it collectively. Many, 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 many people are coming into this understanding and are more drawn to the astrological charts and with a very, he says, really just a basic, like a surface kind of level of understanding. and. It's actually an effort to create a new structure that allows for scaffolding to support your solar plexus, he said, your spirit, in order to create a broader understanding that's more grounded through that sacral chakra. I'm pointing to my necklace because it's actually a carnelian energies, which is 
the sacral chakra, which I've been wearing this all day, so I didn't really necessarily think about that when I came into session, but now I'm looking at it going, hey, and you're saying it's an effort to ground the energies. So it's not that the fire is this unruly, crazed, supercharged, ecstatic energy that just doesn't have a purpose, like it just goes everywhere because it's just uncontrolled. It is this energy of freeing what is already been inside you and catalyzing that with like it's a partnership like they come together like they're in tandem and then they work together to allow for a new kind of a synergy that will support you he says in about the next it's like one to three years ahead which right now I'm recording this at the very end you guys won't see this until probably June but it's this is the very end of May 2021 and going into June 2021 so it'll be three years from now, one to three years from now. So June, 2022, 23, 24, like that. Um, and he says, so it's a pattern, one, two, three. And he says, beginning, middle, end. And he says, the, the energy of the past, present, future. It's that energy, you guys, that he says, that's the closest thing that consciousness can get to a linear process beginning middle end like a three-part thing one two three kind of a thing it's like morning noon night like boom 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 interesting that's super interesting i love that number three really kind of has a great vibe for me when i see three it's ascended master number it's also a number of truth this is true this is true this is true hey pay attention this is true something true is coming through here this is truth this is truth very much an alignment energy. Wow, that's like really, wow, what do you guys think of that? I mean, hello, did you expect David Bowie to be such a, oh, I, I did, super duper nose energy, super totally nose energy, so I'm, I guess I'm not shocked by that. I appreciate it. I appreciate that energy myself. So what can, what kind of insight can you give us um, as we are here in during this time of our lives, a unique time where we're kind of in an in-between, like leaving an old system or structure of life that we had, then we have this collective traumatic experience of the pandemic, and now some of us are in different parts of the world that are in different places, different phases of this process. And so, I mean, is that what's leading to this kind of, it's almost like a, an eruptions, eruptions of energy or con conflict isn't even the right word because it feels like there are moments of releasement, you guys, almost like a volcano. That's kind of how I experience the energy. So like acts of violence, like in the United States where I live, there is a ton, there, there's all, there has been constant, multiple times a day, news things, news updates about mass shootings here and a mass shooting there and a domestic violence situation that results in kids being um, injured near death or killed or I mean just all these like and some of it's random with stranger stuff and some of it's a workplace stuff and it but they're mass shootings like a lot of it is gun violence stuff and without the politics of it I literally feel like there's these eruptions of of release and, and it's like an angry energy. And he says it's resentment. He says the closest energy that is being released right now is this energy of resentment, which he says is connected to remorse or regretful experiences looking back over your lifetime having this almost like a life review he shows me at the end of life you guys um there's often this life review process that happens i can talk about that i think i've talked about it on fairy grasshopper my fairy grasshopper channel if i haven't i'll do a video on fairy grasshopper youtube about life review so you can i can talk more about that there but there's a kind of this process that happens when you look back over your life and 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 he says and and that's where you kind of take stock of things and think oh my gosh am i going to regret this like what i'm doing now am i going to regret or am i going to feel like oh i didn't take those opportunities when i had them or what what's going on and he's showing me the word courage he says this is a time for courage because you're facing your mortality while you are living it he 
says. So all the things that are most precious to you, that are most dear to you, that are most valuable to you, like your relationships, like maybe with your children or your significant others or your family or even like your work or your friendships or your animals or your pets, these are the places where you feel the most vulnerable, where there is an opportunity for, for a depth of fear to come through and to kind of permeate the, the uh, awareness of the relationship that there is some fragility there that it is not permanent that it is temporary and the nature he says the nature of morality or morality <laughs> whoa that's a Freudian slip mortality I didn't see the T there in that one mortality is that understanding that something that's fragile that's so special and important to you is something that you really can't protect like you don't have control to like keep it safe and everything's perfect and nothing's going to ever happen that's bad you know to your kids to your pets to you know i mean it just you don't enter into the relationship to a marriage to to a partnership to a workplace to a job to a career thinking oh this is going to be awful eventually i'm going to i'm going to get burned out i'm going to hate this i'm going to get angry i'm going to there's going to be infidelity there's going to be i mean you don't enter into a relationship thinking oh this person's going to disappoint me or i'm going to make bad choices or make mistakes or whatever it might be you don't enter into that knowing that but right now he says because collectively what you've experienced is this understanding of your the fragility of life and how for some it's this 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 hardening of the fear it's calcifying basically i say this a lot like when i'm talking to people and I talk about energy stuff like i'm in sessions i'm like it's calcifying so if you think about something that calcifies in your body it's hard for your body to to pass it, to detox from it. Like if you get calcification of like stones in your bladder or stones in your gallbladder or your kidneys or whatever. I mean, it's like just, it, woo! Nobody even wants to think about that. No. <laughs> we don't need that. Thanks, no thanks. He says, so what you're seeing when he says, Bridget, you're describing this eruption, like this just volcano and not really, nobody really knows what the impacts of it are going to be. It's the, the moment where people get to the point where they break wide open and everything that was inside is outside and all the collective traumas that they felt and the people that were in their family before them that inflicted upon them or experiences that they had or they held and they internalize so much, they just break wide open and all this fire and fury, he says, fury comes out. He says, but it's not fury, it's regret. It's this devastation of realizing that I had a part of this and it's up to me to work with this, whatever my this is, even if it's awful and horrific, it's not to internalize it, it's to integrate the, the power and to activate the power within me that was dormant before that happened, before that situation happened, before that trauma was experienced, or before I realized I had power and I just let others' voices be my reality and be my overlay. Whether it be a parent or a grandparent or a teacher or somebody that you really cared about and, and looked up to and they, they told you something about yourself that you just accepted as true because there was trust there and now you can can kind of see this this escape this energy just escapes of realizing that they were human too and therefore their perception is only one view of you so what you've been told about yourself is only one viewpoint it's only one part of that pie or that circle or only one phase of the moon good analogy only one phase of the moon that one person that teacher that thought you were awesome that coach that told you you sucked that parent that you could never seem to please or couldn't tell you their feelings or didn't seem to nurture or hug you or love you. Each of those people have only one perspective, one phase of the moon of a cycle of your life. And what's happening, he says, is the, through this release, is there's a release of collective regret that's happening. And a lot of many humans do not know what to do with this. And you move quickly from regret into remorse. So regret is like this disappointment and, and being angry almost about it. And then this remorse is like the feeling of sadness about it. So it's a grief. So the regret and the remorse is like one is kind of more, a little more angry and kind of powerful, like it's somebody else's fault. And the remorse is like taking it and realizing that it's sadness that I missed that chance opportunity. I, 
I am part of this, I have a piece of this, even, even though I know that I am not what happened to me, but I understand that my higher consciousness, my soul is, it's a part of that fire transmuting, changing energy that's dynamic and that can keep healing working on healing, not to rehash the pain or the grief, but to acknowledge the very real human emotions that we have been ignoring for centuries is what you are connecting to is this ancestral work that has been going on for many people. That's a new trendy thing, by the way, in spirituality. People are talking about ancestors, working with your ancestry. And it's been going on for about three years, I'd say. I've seen that kind of start to bubble up and come up, and that's to prepare us for this now, to understand that it's not just us. The baggage we carry isn't just our own. It's the, the lineage that we have as well. And so that can feel crushing, debilitating, heavy, but you can set it down. You can take your part. And he's showing me, like, you have so much choice now. And so he says... Um, because I, so my husband and I were talking about this and I'm like, well, there's mental health issues. There's a lot of mental health stuff. We've been stuck indoors for so long and we've been constantly hypervigilant and scared that we're gonna die, that somebody we love is gonna die, that life is gonna be taken from us and then we have to go outside and still interact and get the groceries and do the things and some, some people have to go to work and then be frontline with people and have masks and all this stuff and then who's, who is healthy and who isn't healthy, you don't know, because there's no like flashing forehead sign that says, and there's all these unknowns and uncertainty, and it's been this pattern, and now it's like, okay, everything's fine now, go out to the world. It's like, wait a minute, where's the trust? Where's the trust? What kind of pattern, are, what, what are we building here? This is a new territory, this uncharted territory that reminds me, my son's yearbook says, uh, part of the motto that they have at their school for this year for the yearbook stuff was uncharted territory. I'm not going to read, I'm not going to recount the whole motto, so, you know, but it was uncharted territory. And I thought, wow, we can either be pirates or on a pleasure cruise. What do you guys want to do? And in this conversation that my husband and I were having about um, all of the violence that's happening, and I said, well, it's pent up. Everybody's like just like we're, people are stuck and people are desperate and they don't know what to do. And, and they're just like, it's like, it's not a breakdown. It's like a breakthrough almost. It's like a chew, get it out of your body, get it out of your body. And all the, like the traditional signals, everything's all mixed up and there's not a structure in which to express or a safe way to do that. And with all this built up pressure, many, many people who already struggled with mental health and mental health awareness, don't have the tools or the people or the influences or the money or that they don't have access to the resources. And of course this stuff is gonna happen. I mean, they have access to weapons, I guess, that, you know, maybe give them an energy of perceived power that feel like, I mean, maybe it's just this perception of I need to take my power back and here's how I'm doing it. Or I need to be seen or I need to be visible. I, I, don't, I don't even, I have no idea what's going through their mind necessarily, but it's obvious that there's all this stuff happening all at once. It's a mental health. It's a huge mental health cry out. And not because we're gonna label people and put them into boxes and go and use a mental health thing as an excuse. It's no excuse, but it's a, a level of opportunity for conversation and understanding and it's a relationship. It's a relationship that we can have. It's a conversation, a dialogue that we can have that makes things not so fringe and weird and creepy and sketchy. It makes things real. Human beings need to have feeling, feelings and emotions and we need to start having real conversations about that. And I'm working on that with my business <laughs> because we can't have these false images portrayed and expect to live up to filtered images of us anywhere, social media, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever, or at work even. Okay, I dress a certain way, so therefore I dress this way. Does that mean I am highly educated, very, very smart, and you should listen to everything I say? Or is really the highly educated, very smart person that has their act together, the person that's, you know, wearing jeans and a t-shirt. And they're sitting at the same table and you can't tell, like you shouldn't, we're making, 
assumptions based on old stuff, old patterns that are not even in place. And the truth is that are, are not even in it valid anymore. It's like you're using the textbook from 1960 when it's like the 2000s now. Yeah. So the emotion and the conversation about emotion needs to be something that is okay where there's not this expectation of I'm going to just dump on you and you're going to fix it or you're going to make it better or you're going to jump in there with me and get all messy with me and one up me on oh yeah well this is what I'm dealing with or you're not going to be like oh tell me what's wrong with you like you're not going to be my friend slash counselor no it has to be this equal sensitive genuine dialogue he says now you have it it's the rawness, the very real part of relationship is the point you, why you came here. And if you want to retain, you, you need retention in your relationships. And the understanding of your mortality is going to give you this, this, this sweet, the sweetness, he says, like the nectar of understanding that the fragility and the vulnerability is, that's the sweet stuff. Like that's the best part. That's the best part when you can be real. It's like, that's the best part. That's the best part of this human stuff, the human thing, you know, that's the best part. So I thought we were gonna talk about creativity and innovation. He says, well, don't you think that's what this is? This is a different way. This isn't uh, intellectual mind conversation about A plus B equals C or a mathematic equation. It is a pattern and a rhythm and a cycle, but it's about the human cycle and the understanding of the emotions and the pathways through which you are receiving the energy and where you're redirecting it to and where you need it to be. And you're definitely in a space where you need the converter. <laughs> so solar plexus, energy, sacral chakra, orange, very active. So you guys, if you're watching, if you've been watching and listening and you're a feeler, you're like an energy worker, you're sensitive to energy or in tune with energy, or you love the chakras, you're like a yoga person, hello to you solar plexus and sacral chakra so that spirit chakra at the belly and that low belly that pelvis sacral chakra as well so go ahead and work do some work with that for yourself to help clear shift move detoxify the energy in a gentle way allowing emotions to be able to be received to wherever you need them to be so that you can know what's going on with you instead of internalizing them those are just a couple of the things I think that I'm taking away from this conversation. I have to listen back. I mean, this happens a lot, right? When I'm doing videos, I have to listen back so I can really get into this for myself. But all this information is coming from and through the channel of David Bowie in the afterlife. So let's give credit to David Bowie in the afterlife. Very orange right now. He is super orange, <laughs> which is a creative energy color. So awesome to that for you. And thank you for helping us to kind of rebirth ourselves because that's really what we're doing, you guys. And it's messy and it's not pretty. It's not necessarily fun times, but it's real stuff. And we can find the sweetness, like he said, in that fragility or that vulnerability. We can find the sweetness in the emotion stuff, which is super new territory for me because I, although on my furry grasshopper channel and my vlogs, I've been crying and stuff, <laughs> which I don't usually do, especially not on camera, like, because I do ugly cries anyway. My cries aren't like, oh, it's so pretty or anything. Nah, it's not delicate or dainty at all. Okay. It's just, uh, uh, like a mother, right? Because that's where I'm at. And the emotional piece is not, it's uncharted territory for some of us, right? It is, huh? As far as feeling safe and knowing where and having relationships or sacred places where we can actually tap into and connect with our emotions without feeling too overwhelmed or without feeling too vulnerable where we feel just like raw, you know? Gentle and fragile maybe is okay, but getting too raw, too real, too fast in new relationships is tricky, but it's definitely something that I... I care about for myself and my work mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. definitely all right so hey thanks for watching the above life channel here on YouTube where I channel afterlife celebrity guests to get information for us to, so that we can live our lives our very real human lives because it's up to you to live your life I can't live it for you you've got to live it that's 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 for you right 
I hope we've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope to help you to do just that. It's your life after all, so live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.